Scarecrow is has always been one of my very favorite films. Um, oh, great. And you've been revisiting it quite a lot this past year because of the 40th anniversary. What has that experience mm-hmm. been like for you to revisit? Well, it's that? been fantastic. Uh, you know, they um, they uh, had a new print made and showed it at Cannes, they, uh, and um, then they uh, showed it at the Lyon Film Festival, which was extraordinary. They had... Uh, their opening night is in a big arena, and there were 5,000 people, and it was, um, you know, an honor and uh, and just a pleasure to see it on such a large screen. But it was interesting because uh, I I think about two, three months later, we uh, we had a week of it at the film farm in New York, and those it is a quite small and intimate. And I had two different experiences. When I saw it on the big screen, I felt I was going across America with these guys, but I was on the outside watching them. When I saw it in a small theater, I felt I was right with them. You know, it was just a very intimate experience, and it was just terrific. Did you? Were you pleased with the way it played for audiences? I mean, did did it feel like a discovery for a lot of those audiences? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, they really like the film. Uh, The audiences are fantastic. Uh, Also, uh, you know, something that I forget because we all live our lives the same way now with uh, the Internet and with uh, television. And I never had so many people come up to me uh, as in the uh, uh, Lyon Festival saying it was the first time they've ever seen it on the big screen. And that film actually was shot for the big screen. You know, it, it just has that feeling of space and uh, and uh, fantasy uh, in many ways, and uh, and they so these people who had seen it before and liked the film uh, had a new experience also. Yeah, well, I definitely want to talk to you about the way uh, the way in which you shot it with Vilmos, uh, but but take me back to the beginnings of this. You came on there. There was uh, there was an initial director attached to it. That yeah, fell out there was a, uh, and there was also an initial studio uh, involved. With it. it was with um, uh, at first it was with um, from what I understand um, Allied Artists, no United Artists. And uh, they had planned to do it with um, Bill Cosby and Jack Clemens, and I think that would have been, you know, it could have been a very good film, but it would certainly be a different film, much different. So they were looking for something more comical, I guess, uh, more maybe more comical or more commercial, or you know, um, I, you can never tell what they're looking for. But that was their their thinking of who they should cast it with, but then they put it in turnaround, and Warner Brothers picked it up, and they spoke to uh, Pacino and um, Hackman, and uh, both of them liked the script. I, uh, Al had uh, and Al had been had read it while we were still, uh, I think, involved in uh, finishing up Panic, and we'd see each other a lot, and he'd tell me about this film that uh, he was going to do, and... Um, it sounded great, and uh, but and I didn't know uh, anything about um, who was involved with it or, or what. But then, as time went on, evidently both actors um, just didn't feel comfortable with the director, mm. and uh, I guess the agents and everybody panicked. And Al, since we had worked together, Al suggested me, mm. and um, I, I received it in the mail one day, and. Uh, I figured that Al had asked him to send it so that I could, you know, talk to him about it for his his own uh, character and his own part. But uh, it turns out that um, they were sending it to me to see if I liked it, and I did. I liked it very much. Well, and, I read uh, this. I read an interview with Pacino where he said it was it was one of the very best scripts he's ever read. So, so obviously you had the same reaction. Uh, yeah, except that um, you know, uh, interpretation is something else too, because you can read a script and then, uh, and and I have no idea what went on between uh, them and the first director, but maybe they didn't like his interpretation of what they were reading. And uh, when I got it, my interpretation I think was different than uh, the author's interpretation, because when he fi- when he saw the film, he was very respectful and he liked the film. But he said it was not his film. You know, he had a different view of it. And I think if you give a script to five different directors, you're going to get five different films. Well, the, the, yeah, that's always the kind of the 
the the give and take there when when someone else picks up your script to interpret it. I mean, that's the nature of right. art form. But tell me, when you read it, what you recognized in it, what you what you saw in it that, that you wanted. Well, to I just saw the humanity in it. I just uh, liked the love story between two guys who start out grumbling at one another and uh, end up loving one another. Yeah. And the experience yeah. they go through it, you know, um, it's uh, they're, they're they're people on the on the margin. They're not everyday people, but those people have the same lives as everybody else. And I think it, that's something that we're not uh, we're not reminded of enough anymore, like we exactly. were back then. You know, and, and and you could make movies about people that live in the margins back then it seems like from a spectator's perspective but tell me about the the, the 70s america that you were portraying in that movie well um first of all it was uh, right after the counterculture revolution which took place in the 60s you know with new music and new uh, ideas and and asking questions where uh, <clears throat> before that we just uh, if we were told to do something we did it we didn't uh, object to anything we just felt oh that's the way life is and, and we'll go on that way but i think uh, the 70s were reflecting uh, what we learned in the uh, 60s from the counterculture revolution and what we learned in the 50s from the beat generation and uh, here we had uh, different attitudes i mean you, you can still see the same relations between people but uh what changes is their acceptances of one another I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is there, I want to ask you obviously questions about the performances in the film because you're working in this film with two of the greatest actors that I think we've ever seen on, on screen. I think so too, yeah. Joining, joining for, the, for, for the first and I think the only time. Um, so tell me about that relationship, how it grew dur during the course of filming. When I when I met with because uh, I had to go out and meet uh, Hackman because I'd never met him before and um, he put the okay on it so I was uh, hired to do it but then in the first week of um, rehearsal he reminded me that he's uh, quite paranoid that Al and I had worked together before and I said well you don't have to worry about that because that's no consideration for me I work with all my actors I love them all and I'll work you know and listen to them all and uh, you know not necessarily accommodate, but uh, reason with them in, in a way that um, they can understand. And a, a perfect example, the, uh, we started the first day of shooting, and um, when Hackman, when I said action on that first shot, and he was coming down the hill, but where the tree is, um, he waved his hands and stopped it, because he, and uh, I went up to see what was the matter, and he wanted to know why he was on this hill walking down to this road, you know, and I had to, I had to justify it by telling him that on the other side of the hill is a train, and that's the train that he was riding on, and he jumped off. He knew that there was a road on the other side of the hill, so he was up and over, and, uh, you know, he, oh, okay. You know, he just needed that, and actors mm -hmm. do need things. But uh, <clears throat> uh, both of them are different kind of actors. Uh, Hackman can put on the costume, and he's the character, and... Uh, Al puts on the costume and he stays there through the whole film. Yeah. Uh, and that's their way of working. And they both produce beautifully in their own method, you know. Uh, so, uh, but I don't think, uh, I don't think Al uh, realized at first that Hackman might have been annoyed by some of his antics because sometimes you can't communicate with somebody who's not being a real person and just being a character all the time. So there were those difficulties and, uh, and Hackman, I think, uh, used that as part of his character because he he started to intimidate uh, Al, even in even off camera. And I knew this was happening, and I, I sort of felt that this was his method, and I, I let it happen because it worked for the film, mm -hmm. hoping that by the time it's over, uh, they'll all be friends and hugs and kisses, and it was pretty much that. Was did you have the luxury of shooting mostly in sequence, or was it all out of order? Yeah, yeah, we because uh, we started at one part of the country, and then we made stops in. Uh, we started in uh, California, 
I think then we went to uh, Denver and then to Detroit, and uh, that is the continuity of the film. And wherever possible, we would do scenes in continuity. But even if the scenes weren't in continuity, the section of the uh, film was in continuity, and they could feel, you know, it was like doing a play for them. Was, uh, they yeah. didn't have to go to the beginning, then down to the end, and back to the middle, and down to the end, and back to the beginning. They were just uh, able to keep their character in the uh, in the uh, mood that um, that part of the uh, scene required. Was there, in terms of performance, was there, uh, because Hackman's character is, he's very abrasive, uh, and, and Pacino's lion is is very kind of sweet and vulnerable. Was exactly. was it was it tricky to find the tones of that so it didn't go too far? No, I don't think so. Characters? I think I think I think Hackman is kind of abrasive. Uh, Hackman is the first one to admit, even when he's interviewed on television, that he never gets along with any directors he works with. But he convinced me that uh, I was one that he got along with in a very strong way. <laughs> he said it, but. Uh, <laughs> You know, because he had just finished doing a film in London, and he kept bitching and moaning about the director. And he said, "Come on, Gene, you say you don't get along with any directors you work with." And he said, "I get along with you." <laughs> I said, "Oh yeah." <laughs> so uh, there's also what, what's remarkable about the movie to me as well is the the tremendous sense of environment. I mean, you it really brings these these places to life that they're that they're traveling in and out of, and you kind of. You brought in non-actors or people that lived in those towns to play a role in many of those scenes, didn't you? That's right. Not to the likes of, uh, of Hackman all the time, but, but I'd use that. I went and cast in each of the places we went, and I found people that I thought were quite good. You know, I mean, everybody always thinks that the little boy that uh, that's supposed to be uh, Lion's son is his son because he looks so much like Al. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and that's uh, you know it's it's just my feeling about casting and my feeling about uh, location. You know, uh, understand uh, before that I was a photographer, so I I have a feeling for environment and I have a feeling for the character too. Uh, and uh, I think my uh, the, the one thing that I was concerned with when I started and as I worked uh, through my successive films, I became much more confident in was whether I could handle the actors, you know, and speak their language because they do have a, a language of their own. But I think the way I work accommodates uh, certainly Gene's way of working. You know, he, I mean, after certain scenes, he would come and thank me for giving him an accident that he could react to. Mm. Because they love to uh, just be the character and, and uh, not always know exactly what's going to happen. And I like it that way. I like to, I like improvisation. And Hackman's uh, Hackman's a very funny guy, and uh, I knew this. And uh, before, uh, when we come to the end of a scene, uh, I wouldn't cut. I'd keep the cameras rolling because they don't cut until I say cut. And uh, I knew Hackman was going to say something. And the scene in the first uh, cafe where he says at the end, "I'll have a bottle of beer and a chocolate donut," and it really cracks Pacino up. <laughs> and yeah. you can't get that kind of laughing unless it's real. Absolutely. And uh, so, I, so I find things like that that uh, uh, can help them and help me uh, get something fresh from them. What's also terrific and refreshing about the movie too is that it, it, it's patience because you you will because you have two just remarkable lead actors that you're working with, mm-hmm. so you'll hold them in a single shot and let the scene right. play out without interruption. That same scene in the uh, cafe, I think it's eight minutes, and uh, they just go through it in eight minutes. I never, I, don't, I, I put one cut in there just for the guy who goes over to the cigarette machine, but otherwise I stay on them in one shot, and I don't move it and let them talk it out. Yeah, I, I love that. I, I, wish, I, wish, I, I wish everything wasn't cut cut all up every three seconds well i i do too but sometimes it's it's necessary you know if it's if it's possible to shoot that way and it, and it serves the uh the uh, film you know you you do it that way but if if it if it needs cuts because a lot of films need cuts and because it, it it's a, it's a film of of picture language you know and and all the cuts and zooms and everything they mean something to what we're saying you know uh, i i prefer to uh find it in the uh, in the uh, action of the film and the pictures and in words because uh, it really is motion pictures right 
you know, but there's, but it's also so. Um, it, it, it's great looking cinema as well. I mean, it's shot so beautifully. For yeah. The big, big well, screen, well, you know. Said. Yeah, I uh, when I when I uh, I had a different idea of what I thought it should be uh, when I started because since they were on the road and they were traveling across country, I thought I'd do a lot of uh, movement, a lot of the camera, and, and travel across country with them. And then when I uh, mentioned this to Vilmos Zygmunt, he said, "Well, that's funny. I didn't see it that way." I said, "Well, tell me how you saw it." And he said, "Well, I see it as a fairy tale." And that struck a bell with me, and I liked that. And, uh, you know, he was saying certain things that, because, uh, you know, I, I don't care uh, who comes up with a good idea when, because we're, we're working with a, at least 100 people, and they all are supposed to be professionals and contributors, you know, and if they come up with the idea, that's great. And so that's the way we went. We wanted it to be more of a fairy tale. Well, it's such a special portrait of, this, of the America at that time, and mm-hmm. I, I find it very interesting that you know I know, I know Vilmos uh, his struggles uh, um, coming up as a cameraman and how he got into the country and started working, but his had to have been a very unique perspective on the um, American experience. I think. Well, uh, you know, we traveled across the country a couple of times together before we ever started shooting, and it's quite beautiful. I think everybody should do that at least once uh, because uh, the perspective is so different everywhere you travel. You know, you can you can see uh, a storm that's uh, in in full force a hundred miles away in some areas because the land is so flat. And you just you know you just see things that. Uh, uh, if you're if you stay in the city all the time, you know you see a lot of buildings, and you know I, I love New York, but uh, uh, sometimes the country gives you feeds you differently. And also, if if you if you see uh, foreigners that come to uh, to uh, America to shoot uh, films, even in New York, they come with a different perspective, and 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 you you learn things from their view, from what they see. You see it every day, so it's not so special. But when they come and they see it, it becomes special. Yeah. Uh tell me about the uh the, the cut of the movie that we all that we all know and love. W- was anything sacrificed in that final cut that was painful? Uh well it was painful but also necessary. Uh there there were two cuts, two scenes that I took out. One I didn't like at all. Uh, it was a scene that I had uh Al do an improvisation when when he's in prison and uh, he gets to be director of the uh of the theater group, and uh, so he does a, an improv, but I, it didn't work at all. I mean, there were pieces of it, but it just didn't fit this film. And the other thing is a, a great scene with um, Hackman and Pacino when they get out of prison. We stop at a bar, and they have to go to the toilet, and there's a scene in the toilet. It's just really funny with, between these two guys, and he really says things about them. But it was a point in the film where I just didn't, you know, it was not necessary to show another scene. It was necessary to keep on traveling because they're going to Detroit. You know, they're, they're going to settle their business and start a car wash in, in Denver. So we didn't need any more build-up to the, to the story. And tell me about foreign audiences and how they responded to it because you you picked up the the Palme d'Or that year. Yeah, you? well, you know, I, I'm very popular with the foreign audiences. I wish the Americans would catch on as fast, but the Americans are catching on now. Uh, so... Mm-hmm. They, they see a, they see a vision of New York they don't get to see, or of America they don't get to see all the time they uh, mm-hmm. see two great actors performing they, uh, there's a lot of humor in the film there's a lot of mm-hmm. pathos in the film you know I, I you know I always say I love to cry in my films and I always do you know and I I find that moment that really touches me. I've, I've also, uh, I don't know if you read it because I've, I've mentioned it a lot, but I've uh, written a sequel to this, but I just don't think it'll ever get on because uh, one, Hackman is retired, and once he makes up his mind to do something, that's it. And uh, I've sent it to Al. If Al is interested, and I never know because, you know, when you've got 16 people managing you, they all say, no, you can't do that because there's no money in it. You can't do that because it's this. And, you know, they all want to do Spider-Man and Iron Man. Right. But that, that, I think that's coming to an end also. Uh, but I, I, wanted, I was interested in what you, what you wanted to continue to explore in those characters. Uh, you mean uh, for the, for the sequel? sequel? 
Yes, sir. Oh, lots. First of all, it takes place 30 years later, so what happened to them? Well, I, in my mind, since he was determined and he had the money, they started a car wash. It's a very successful car wash. Uh, the uh, the um, lion character, he recovers in the hospital, and then he, he decides that you know he's got to make something of himself in life, and he's just out of the Navy, so he goes back to school on the GI Bill, and he becomes very astute at computers and, and uh, working, and he's, and he's the smart one of the two, although he lets the other one think that he's the smart one, and he's running everything. Uh, Hackman, uh, or uh, Lion, uh, uh, no, Max marries Frenchie, and they adopt a, uh, a Chinese baby, and uh, she's now in her early 20s, and she swears as much as he swears. You know, she's a real tough cookie and uh, had a lot of fun. And then we bring into the story the son that uh, Lion thinks is dead, mm. who is not, but is in, uh, in living in Detroit and getting into a lot of trouble. I I pray that that happens. That that movie happens. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I I do too. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but it's that. not it's not something that Warner Brothers would want to do, and I don't know whether they own the rights so that they could stop it from being used. But if they do, that would be a shame. But if but if not, I have to figure out what to do with it with the Hackman uh, part. You know, I, I could probably uh, find a very good actor that could do it because it's 30 years later, and you don't always remember what people look like. Of course. But yeah. uh, but uh, but I have a few other choices. Um, so you know, I keep that in the back of my mind. I, uh, right now, I like to see what Al thinks of 